Season 4, Season of the Loot Reborn. The theme has finally been revealed. Very good news up front. The chance to fail masterworking has been removed. Blizzard says it will mightily increase the material requirements for the masterworking instead. And that is only one of the changes they actually listened to us and they learned from the patch test realm. So here already a thumbs up. There is quite some sadness coming. If you're reading through the bullet points, you'll notice that season four is not getting much more than we expected. So all the standard changes to itemization, Helltide and Daryl and the pit, plus then the next one fight with the Iron Wolves. So that has to do actually with the season. Before we get to that, the things they learned from the PDR. We do have the master working, the tempering and more. And they changed how greater affixes are being shown. Sadly, they didn't change the color of the item. But what we now have instead of this tiny one, two or whatsoever, there is the sun going to be appearing next to the item. Let me zoom in. It used to be a very tiny one, two or three for more greater affixes. I would assume you probably get one sun, two suns, three suns if you then have three greater affixes, which still has the problem of not separating them actually in your inventory. Generally speaking, in terms of item drops, nothing has changed. So 925 is still going to drop very early from monsters 95 on. So a tier 41 dungeon being cleared with around level 65. Yes, that's actually possible. It sounds crazy, but 65 is a tier. But from level 65 on, you'll constantly be dropping only 925 items if you know your builds. Else, check the guides on the channel. A neat little feature they put in into the Codex of Powers. Now we're going to get all the aspects in there. That was already in the PDR, but aspects can now be favorited within the Codex of Power. And additionally to that, a tooltip will denote whether you already have the aspect equipped when searching within the Codex. It happens to me a lot where I'm like, oh, what aspect do I still need? Ha ha ha. Thank you. It's a tiny thing, but already being able to favorite all the aspects I usually play for this season. That's pretty useful. Now I get good and bad news about tempering. First, we still do need a 20 veiled crystal for temper, as it seems. But on that note, there is an improvement. Crafting material cost improvements. Blizzard says the cost to imprint legendary aspects has been substantially reduced. This used to cost 75 veiled crystals and salvaging items rewards more veiled crystals. So this might still cost 20 veiled crystals to actually temper, but in total, it actually did get improved to get more veiled crystals. And at least it's not 75 anymore. I mean, substantially, I would say it's 10, 15, maybe 25. It should be almost for free to actually enchant things because putting aspects on items is a bread and butter of the game and shouldn't be hit behind a paywall. Now on the topic of tempering manuals, we're hoping for them to split things more. This is the bone augments. It has bone splinters, bone spear, bone spirit, and bone storm. Sure, these are all bone augments, but it's also four. And in this case, you want only bone spear, for example. That's it. You, you literally don't want any of the others. So it's a one out of four chance to temper this. And you want it at the highest chance possible. It's actually highly likely to break your item using up all your tempering points that you can't really get what you're looking for. I was hoping for manuals to only have three choices instead of four, because four can be very iffy especially since there are manuals that have five or six choices druid i'm looking at you you're screwed now there's one good thing about tempering manuals though as you're doing the seasonal journey and i'm zooming in here contains a tamper manual and consumables such as elixirs and baneful hearts baneful hearts are used to summon the hell type boss so that's anyways pretty cool but if you're doing the seasonal journey and you should definitely do the seasonal journey you will probably fast track some of those tamper manuals sooner and don't have to scramble through the world and regarding the seasonal blessings, I have very good news for you. But first, Master Working. Master Working, we already talked about. They removed the chance to fail. And they seem to have reduced the cost as well. This is Master Working, and it's now three veiled crystal, 10 and 10. I think it was five up to side the first time. So they might have actually doubled Master Working cost in terms of normal materials and just reduce the veiled crystals but not being able to fail is already huge and if you wonder where this is this is actually a pc gamer article yes not all the info is in there you actually have to read a whole article again but i'll link that article in the description below as well short thing about tempering again the elemental search tempering affix has been nerfed you know the one that could give billions of damage 
Blizzard says that's been adjusted to be a real number now. This is actually good. It should still be strong. It should still be fun. But the levels that it achieved and kind of bounced up to was kind of stupid. It promises gem upgrades, but these seem to be non-existent because gems are simpler, streamlined, and more effective across your character's journey. Crude gems have been removed and crafting levels have been shifted back. Normal gems are available at 51 flawless, 71 royal, 91, and diamonds have had all resistance increased. Remember when I complained we can't get enough all resistance easy now? Well, that is fixed. Topaz now provides increased intelligence and sapphires increased willpower, amethyst increased your strength, and emeralds now provide bonus dexterity. Good, we'll see how that feels, but I was kind of expecting a little bit more from gems. To the Helltide Reborn, not much changed. We're still having the threat meter. They're available from world tier one and two on. That is all good. You can summon mommy in the middle and she'll drop boss materials and overall amounts of loot. The good thing is we're getting bonus hellish changes and that is called the profane mine cage. Consuming a profane mine cage increases the level of Helltide monsters by 10 and boosts cinder drop rates. These are guaranteed drop after killing Hellborn. You will see diminishing returns on boosted monster closer to the level cap. Keep progressing in world tiers to retain the same benefit from this potent elixir. The mine cache will only last until the end of season four loot reborn and then it's gone, but I hope it will actually be a permanent item because it's amazing. The Hellborn are the dudes that attack you when your threat meter is high and then one of these cool boss opponent comes that's like a player as the blood harvest hand and you'll get the mine cache, get more cinders. Seems pretty good to me. And another little good news, the Doomsayers could drop a chest of Doomsaying. A chest of Doomsaying cost 50 cinders. Instead of that, they now just simply drop loot. The Doomsayers are just thrown throughout the Helltide and you interact with them and boom, loot pinata. Now the greatest challenge, the Pit of Artificers, and it still has 200 total levels, but something did change here because people were complaining that this shit is too easy. Well, monsters in the pit will exceed level 199 because monsters were stuck at level 199 from tier 100 of the pit on. This it says it found some aspects of the pit were a little bit too easy. So I think that at level 130, 160, we're going to get monsters now at 205, 207, 206. It will go a bit higher. Difficulty will spike. So the pit will become a bit more of a challenge. To the topic of Torment and Echoes, they're still saying these bosses cost more to summon but drop far more rewards. We'll see about that. We complain that it's not worth it to summon Tormented Echoes. And the only reason to summon Tormented Echoes was Resplendent Spark for the first time that you're actually killing one. Not any one of them. So if I kill Endereal, I get one. If I kill Warshan, I get one and so on. No, you just get one single one. Your first Tormented Echo. Still, maybe it, it will finally be worth it. Which leads us to the seasonal theme. And this is a bit of a disappointment and at the same time, not a surprise. The season is called Loot Reborn and we have the fight with the Iron Wolves on top. Seek out the battle hardened and stalwart Sudi, the Anvil, a stoic field commander of the Iron Wolves. The Iron Wolves are a band of noble mercenaries in the south, seeking to protect the common people of Sanctuary and hold themselves to a higher code of honor than other mercenaries companies of similar metal. Mysteriously, members of their ranks have been dying and you get to find out why. The thing is, you'll meet the lady, Sudi, or however you pronounce it in Kazakhstan. Working with the Iron Wolves will earn you several tempering manuals, which are key to unlocking the potential of your items in Season 4 Loot Reborn. And that's what the season is about. So we get this tiny event to actually get our temper manuals, then we have the pin, we have the tormented echoes and everything, but we're not actually getting a seasonal seam slapped on top of this. I know this will come as a disappointment to you because we're all hoping for actually getting mercenaries as these are the iron wolves and the iron wolves usually provide the mercenaries. Keep in mind though that the iron wolves are now introduced to the world. They're getting their own whispers and all that kind of stuff. So there is some kind of seasonal mechanic coming with them, but not as much as we probably hoped for, which is disappointing. I'll say that it is very disappointing, but I do think that this season is the next step for Diablo, at least in terms of the core system changes that will have a better game in season five, which is again, sad because I wanted a better game in season four, which we're getting, but I do think you understand the disappointment of been. Now I promise very good things about these seasonal blessings. Let me tell you, let me show you. Urn of Nightmare. Boost Paragon Glyph XP earned in Nightmare Dungeons. Yes. So now instead of spending your points just simply on getting more XP because we're getting a lot of XP, right? You can actually finally boost your Glyph XP, then boost your reputation with the Iron Wolves and Urn of Burning Obolts. 
boosts the amount of obolts you can find in Helltide chests. That one seems a bit useless because we kind of always have enough obolts, but having the urn of nightmare is insane because I don't want to spend that much time in nightmare dungeons this season, just enough time to get my glyphs up to then play the pit and other stuff. And that's it. That's the wrap. Now there is the article that I will link below and they promised also that dust devils will not tank the FPS anymore. Elemental search was nerfed. Uniques won't look that different. Yes, they haven't tinkered with uniques yet, but Blizzard says it's toying around with the ability to temper unique items or something like that in the future. I hope they will really change some of the uniques because they're frankly spoken useless and have some useless stats. What are you saying? Disappointed? Excited? Is this something you're looking forward to? Are you going to play season four? I'm excited to try all the builds, especially that things are. Especially what's missing here is class changes that we'll get with the fireside chat. And don't worry, live stream on the channel, video coming, everything will be rocking. And that's very good news. Take Necromancers, for example. Their skeleton minions have been underwhelming since release, but now they're responsible for some of the strongest builds in the game. And we're getting the complete opposite of the painful season one patch that nerfed everything. Blizzard wants every class to have something as broken as Barbarian bonking a boss for a billion damage. So Blizzard wants things to be strong. I can say minions will most likely not get nerfed, and that's what's still coming. Class changes. And if you do want to see the minion Necros right now, how they have been performing in season four, pop up. We get the videos for you, including tempering everything. Enjoy. Thank you for watching so far.